Hi there, this is Heather Vickery, and you've tuned into the Brave Files podcast. I'm so excited to have you here with us today. You know, a life worth living is all about getting out there and experiencing it. You know, it. Life. It's about facing our fears and choosing bravely and living big. It's not about staying small and scared and listening to our limiting voices or letting other people make decisions for us. You, my friend, were made for bigger things, and I want to be part of that journey with you. That's why I'm inviting you to join me live every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central for my weekly live show, Brave in Action. It's usually 10 to 20 minutes of me dropping some fun knowledge to help you step out of fear and into bravery in every possible way. We get together every single week. You can catch us on YouTube. Visit youtube.com slash Heather Vickery or in our free amazing group, The Brave on Purpose Collective. If you haven't already joined the collective, please go and do so right now. Just visit facebook.com slash groups slash Brave on Purpose or just search Brave on Purpose in Facebook and come and join us. I hope to see you at our next live show. It's such a fun way to connect and just get a little mojo going for the week. Speaking of doing brave things, this week's guest joins us as a result of me doing the brave thing. After long admiring Gail Kabaker's work, I reached out to her and I invited her to be a guest on the show. I was thrilled when she said yes, and what has transpired is this magical episode you're about to listen to. Gail Kabaker is living the dream. She's an artist and an illustrator whose work has been featured in The New Yorker, Condé Nest. She's even featured at the Kennedy Center and the longest running art exhibit they have ever ever had. Still, there are times when Gail's inner critic tries to sabotage her and her career. Her success doesn't come from a lack of fear or self-doubt. It comes from her ability to push through and sometimes to just enjoy the pause. With a little help from her friends, her family, and collaborators, Gail gets it done, and she is so much fun. I love this episode. Let's get started. Perseverance, love, and ambition. This is Heather Vickery, and you're listening to The Brave Files, stories from people living courageously. When we choose bravely in big and small ways, it powerfully elevates our lives. I hope these stories connect with you and encourage you to embrace bravery in every possible way, day after day. Together, we can build a movement of courageous living that enriches both our lives and our communities. And if you enjoy the show, I ask you to please share it with others. Maybe think of someone who you want to choose bravely right alongside you. Thanks for tuning in. Now here's the show. Friends, one of the things that I most enjoy about producing and hosting this podcast is my ability to meet wonderful new people in all sorts of spaces and places and invite them into a conversation just because it feels right. And today's guest is one of those people. I was first introduced to Gail Kabaker on Instagram when she shared a stunning portrait of inaugural poet Amanda Gorman, who I'm quite very obsessed with. (laughs) Gail's work is beautiful, but it's also intentional, and she creates art that makes a statement and a difference. In fact, she had her first New Yorker magazine cover, called June Brides, celebrating gay marriage back in 2012. And you all know that's something that's really near and dear to my heart. And she's done a total of six New Yorker covers since then. And I'm really excited to take a look inside. Gail, welcome to The Brave Files. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's going to be so much fun. I mean, your work is really stunning. Thank you. Did you always, were you always an artist? Yeah, I, I, drawn ever since I was a kid like I was always the one who could draw Mm -hmm. and from when I was pretty young I always wanted to be a fashion illustrator so I went to art school right out of high school you know it was kind of like there was nothing else I ever wanted to do so yeah that's really neat and you have a very unique artistic style I do I can't I can't draw a straight line my partner would say I can't do anything straight (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I love your your particular artistic style. I, what was the, the journey towards discovering, like, what was going to be? When I see your work, I know it's yours. It doesn't matter where I would see it. I would go, oh, that's, that's Gail's work. Uh, how did you 
discover that and fine tune that? Well, first of all, I love hearing that because <laughs> I have I have some other artist friends who have issues with people copying them, and mm. I and I, and I actually kind of blasted one of their people who was copying them. I wrote them and I was like, "You need to know that this is not cool. What you're doing, blah blah blah." I was like, "You know what? If it was my if it was me, I'd want one of my art friends to stick up for me." But in thinking about it, I realized I don't actually ever have that happen because somehow I have figured out some this way of painting that is I guess fairly unique and not easy to copy, which I'm kind of surprised even even as I'm saying it, but it's taken a really long time. And, and actually the New Yorker cover was a big turning point because I had started painting in this kind of new style of that New Yorker cover. And my agents at the time I, I was with, um, two women who are, 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 you know, really great illustration agents. I was with them for years and my style was very different before then. And I had started this new way of painting and showed it to them and they're like, yeah, we don't actually think it's very marketable. And so they didn't want to put it on the wrong. website. And, <laughs> they, they and were so wrong. then, so then when the New Yorker cover became a possibility, cause it, it, it became it's like I had to wait about six weeks to find out if it was going to happen. But once I got the the word that it was being considered, I said to them, okay, clearly you might be wrong and I want to be ready. If it does, if this art, you know, if I do get the cover, I want people to be able to go to a website that has this kind of work, not like a one-off, you know, like mm -hmm. of with all this other work and then this New Yorker cover and they agreed. So, you know, we, we, they, they said, okay. And put up, you know, all the other new work that I had been doing, which they thought wasn't very marketable. Um, so it, yeah. So it took me, but I have to say it, in, I think that this, my style has solidified a lot more in the last eight years. And now I kind of feel like, especially after painting the 100 portraits this past year for Vital Voices, which is... Yes, I want to um, talk you know, about you, that. Yeah. You, you know, you spoke about Amanda Gorman. I mean, Amanda was is on the cover of, that, of, of the Vital Voices 100 Women Using Their Power to Empower book. And that's how I met her. Anyway, so painting these 100 portraits in the last couple of years and just, I, I feel like it takes a long time to develop a style. It, it's not something uh, that you can just kind of decide to have. Yeah, and <laughs> I can see that. It's, uh, and, you know, I'll still start a, a, a painting and feel like, oh, my God, I have no idea what I'm doing. You know, like, I, I can't paint am I ever going to paint anything good again? You know, like that still happens and I just have to work through it and know that I will and I'll be fine. And I might just have to make a bunch of ugly paintings and I'm, you know, I know that's part of the process. So, but anyway, thank you for saying that. I, I have I a hard time that. imagining that you've made any ugly paintings. <laughs> mm. No, I definitely make ugly paintings and, uh, I I sometimes do warm ups before I start a portrait or a job or whatever, and um, yeah, if I haven't painted all week, it's just like working out, you know. Sure. It's like you have to warm up. You have to. I mean, sometimes you get lucky, you know. Sometimes I get lucky and I'll I'll start and I'll I'll kind of nail it right away. But usually, it's 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 a process. You know, yeah, my goal is to not that. have not have weeks like that. I don't like it when I don't paint for a week. And but that means that I've been doing other stuff. You know, I've been doing the business end. I've been like mm. working like, you know, fulfilling orders or in my, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm teaching a, a bunch of workshops coming up this year. Like I've been doing all that other stuff, mm -hmm. which, you know, is an important part of of, of, of this work. And I, I actually made a post on Instagram the other day saying, I, I don't want to burst anybody's bubble, 
but it's only me. Like I'm doing everything. <laughs> like you yeah. might think I, you might think I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, you might think I'm really cool and I've got like this studio and these, you know, like someone working, but no, nope, it's just me. So, you know, if something is wrong with something and you're having a problem, like it's me that's dealing with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, maybe it's time for a little office support, Gail. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I actually interviewed someone recently and I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to, make, how to take that leap because I, I do feel like it could be time. I would like mm. that. Well, like that's that my sweet spot. So if I can help yeah. you figure out how to take that leap, let's chat, mm. let's chat about mm -hmm. it. That's that's what I do as a success coach is help is help people grow and thrive and build mm. their lives and their businesses in the way that they want. Uh, and and that's actually really interesting that you brought that up because I always love. I never really know how these conversations are going to go. <laughs> they don't usually go the way my notes <laughs> direct me to take them. Mm -hmm. um, this idea of and I spend a ton of time with all of my clients talking about working on your business, which for a lot of people is really challenging because it's much easier to do client work, but your client work is is your creative process. It's very different, I think, than somebody who does you know, social media work or even copywriting or anything like that. What is that process like for you? Because you, you get commission work from people. They hire you to paint specific paintings. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 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 for example, right now, what I'm working on is I'm working on a, a private commission, you know, that's a portrait. So there's that whole process of, uh, you know, and I have a whole letter that explains it, the process and what we do and, and, and what I'm learning about the process of the private commission that I didn't know, well, I, I, I'm fairly new at, at this, this realization in the last couple of years is that part of the process is the person who is commissioning me likes to talk to me. They mm -hmm. like to have a personal connection. You know, it's like part of the, the, um, the journey of making this painting, whether it's for them or for them to give as a gift. I'm, I'm part of the, I'm part of the, I'm part of the mm -hmm. deal. It's not just my art. Yeah. And I'm, and I, and I'm really embracing that. I'm really having fun with that. Um, so that's, that's a little different. Um, and, and then I, like, I'm also working, I do the back page for Condé Nast Traveler every issue. And it's, um, it's a, a celebrities like a uh, memorable trip. So I, I, you know, they, they interview the celebrity about some trip they went on and I, create an illustration based on the interview. So it always will be a portrait and then it will be something to do with their trip. You know, so right now it's, it's hilarious. It's, it's, it's Manny Jacinto from um, the good place. He's the, oh, um, yeah. the really, the really cute Asian guy. Um, <laughs> and he took his sister to a fertility festival in Japan that's and so cool. because she was having trouble getting pregnant and he took her to this festival and a week later she was pregnant. What? So, so he thinks, you know, like whatever, but the, the really funny part of it is that the visuals from this festival, I can't show any of them because it's all, I mean, I don't <laughs> even know if I can say this. I got, am I allowed to say like, you penis? can say anything okay. on my okay. show. So I love a, all the words. <laughs> so it's all, it's all, which is kind of, kind of uncool actually, but the whole, the fertility symbol at this festival is all penises. It's like they're carrying like huge penis sculptures. It's so opposite of what I think of when I think of fertility, which <laughs> is so feminine exa and exactly. open and cavernous and not phallic. <laughs> I, exactly, exactly. So, you know, in, in working with the art director, I'm, you know, we're having a little bit of like, discussion about what I've been showing. And I'm like, you know, it's really hard to tell this story without showing any penises. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I can't. It's, it's, it's you know, kind wow. of travel. Well, I can't wait to see it. Will you be putting that? Will you be, are you allowed to put those things on Instagram after mm -hmm. they're out? Oh, I can't wait to see after it. After they're published. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's this week. Um, so I, you know, I, I work on all different kinds of, of things. Um, and it kind of, um, 
you know, sometimes my self-directed work is what people buy. So stuff that I mm. paint for myself and yeah. I post it and someone buys it, which is awesome. I love that. Yeah, I, that must I would feel like wonderful. that to be like, if I, that could be 80% of my work life, that would be thrilling. So that is um, cool. I, I yeah. don't see any reason why it couldn't be. Although from the outside, the Condé Nest and, and the New Yorker feels like that's the brass ring that mm -hmm. one would be seeking. I mean, from a, a creative artistic standpoint, you're like, you've totally made it. And it's so fascinating to hear you say, that's cool. It's great. I love it. I, get, I mean, you get to talk to these cool people and paint them and that's wonderful. But what you'd really like to do is just the things that come from your heart. And it's such a nice reminder to people that the brass ring is self-defined. Yeah. I mean, the New Yorker is in a category by itself. And often, <laughs> often it really what, I, what I submit to them are my personal, you know, they come from I, my own, you know, what I love. So, so that usually goes hand in hand. It's very different than, you know, like an editorial assignment or an advertising job where I have to, you know, I've got parameters that, and guidelines that I, you know, that I need to follow. The New Yorker covers are usually, uh, you know, I submit ideas. They say they like it. And I, you know, so it, it's, yeah. you, they're, they're. That's lovely. That is kind of a dream to do everything you love and to have such a huge platform to share it on and have them give you free artistic reign. Yes. <laughs> so, so how did you get here from a little girl who was always drawing? What, what was that journey like for you? And I, and I know we talked before and I think it's really fascinating. You have been lucky enough to always be supported in your journey to be an artist. And a lot of people were told that you can't do that, that that's not a real job. You can't really do that. And that wasn't your, your story, right? No, not at all. My parents were super supportive and I went to art school right out of high school. And I started freelance freelancing, you know, as soon as I got out of art, school, even before, you know, like my senior year, I was already freelancing and I've never really had a, a job. I've always freelanced. And, you know, you got to have a certain kind of personality to handle that kind <laughs> you of do. Yeah. unknown. You know, it's like not everybody cannot know how they're going to pay their rent or not everybody will be willing to take out loans or, you know, to yeah. invest in themselves or like I've taken a ton of, like I've done a lot of crazy things in order to make my career work. And, and, and my husband is also an artist, you know, so, wow. so we, we, we both are, it's all, it's always the unknown. And, um, you know, I have, I have artist friends who are married to, to people who have real jobs, you know, and I, and I always have kind of like, wow, that is so interesting. Like I've never known that. <laughs> it feels so I've never known <laughs> that, that security of <laughs> someone. It's like, Oh, it's okay. You know, regular but, paychecks and health insurance. Well, who yeah. Needs that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, something, I mean, I've done a lot of like personal work and therapy and you know all the yeah. spiritual you know stuff and and I really in the, in the last I would say in the last five years especially I've just really tried to I really work on trusting that everything is just as it's supposed to be mm -hmm. and yes. that you Surrender. know me just me panicking about like oh my god like things are a little slow like when's my me panicking about that makes it worse. It, it, it makes it worse. You know, it's yeah. like, it, and I've really uh, embraced that. So even, that. you know, when, when things might feel quiet, I just, I'm just grateful for it because usually quiet is before something busy will yeah. happen. Oh, I love that. I, because the quiet scares so many people. Ooh. And if you can 
lean into what you just said. Gosh, listeners, like just take that for a minute. The quiet is usually an indicator that that something big is coming because quiet doesn't, the only constant is change, right? But we get in the quiet and we think, oh my God, it's all over. It's going to never going to be better. It's going to be quiet forever. And, and what we resist persists and our thoughts become things, all of the stuff that you're saying. And I love that idea of, ooh, let's enjoy the quiet because I know that means something big is coming next. Yeah. And the other piece of it is uh, as an artist, and I, I, I can only speak as a visual artist and a writer, being able to be quiet and actually do nothing that isn't goal that isn't goal oriented is such an important part of the creative process. And so many people don't understand that, you know, it's like, even my husband and I will fall into this a little bit. It'll be like at the end of the day. So what'd you do today? If I said, I stared at the wall all day, he'd be like, well, that's not getting a lot done, you know? <laughs> Wrong. But that's but where you refill your creative boxes, sometimes, right? Sometimes, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, 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 we just really have to embrace that, that quiet and the, the not having everything need to have a goal mm. or an outcome or a finished product or, you know, so it's, it's, that's why I love going away for, to paint for two or three weeks at a time. And, and I usually do that in the winter. And, Where do you go um, to paint? Oh God, I've gone some amazing places. The last one, I went to Bali for almost a month. Oh my gosh, uh, take me with you. And <laughs> that was, oh my God, that was just heaven. I mean, it's just heaven. And I get into, actually my last New Yorker cover was a painting that I did in Bali, the one of the girl in the ocean um, mm, running, running in the waves. And so, you know, I mean, it's funny because, you know, I went to Bali to paint with no agenda. And what came out of the, that time was a New Yorker cover and a line of tropical greeting cards. So, you know, I don't go in thinking that something's going to come from it. But when I really give myself the permission and the time to really just only paint what I love, inevitably good things do happen from that. <laughs> Absolutely. But, you, but, but, but you can't plan it and it's never, <laughs> you know, can't yeah. plan it. That's all. Yeah. Well, you have to, but you have to intentionally plan the time f- for the nothing, the time for the yes. creativity. And you have yep. to be really thoughtful about that. I, I, I work so much with all my clients on creating an intentional life and an intentional schedule that allows you for that time. And just, again, it's that surrender experiment, trusting that it will all present itself as it's, yep. as it should. Yep. Oh my goodness. I love, I love all of that. I hope everyone listening, like we you taking notes, like pause and go back and re-listen because this <laughs> is for you. Right. This isn't just for people who have a level of success that they have a New Yorker cover or host a podcast or are a best-selling author or whatever, whatever. This idea of um, sitting in the quiet, giving yourself time to decompress and be creative and trust the silence and trust the process. This is for you. It's for everyone. Yeah. Mm. So important. So good to be reminded. And I, I honestly, I have a lot of support for this kind of thinking, you know, it's like, and that's important too. You know, I mean, I kind of made a joke about my husband saying that, but no one understands <laughs> this more than he does. Because, sure. You know, he's an artist and he gets the need for yeah. the, um, the quiet and the process. So I'd love to talk a little bit about the vital voices project and how you got involved and, um, what that work means to you. The, the work you've done for it is just absolutely breathtaking. Mm, thank you. Well, it started, let me say, it kind of, it's interesting because it started, um, I really appreciated that you said that my work makes a statement and a difference. I, 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 I often question that, like, well, what do, what, what does I do make, how do, how do I make a difference? And, you know, how am I not just like making pretty pictures? Like what, what's the, what's the value in what I do? And after 
um, Trump was elected, I, I mean, I really wasn't very political before that, you know, I voted, I I mean, you know, like, and, but now it was different. And I was like, okay, how can I make a difference? And what can I do? And I thought, well, going door to door and knocking on people's doors, you know, like, that's kind of not really a real good use of, of what I could do, maybe. So what I, I came, I decided that making visuals to encourage people to vote, like just still getting behind voting felt like something I could wrap my brain around. And right around the same time, I got asked by the Washington Post art director, who has since become a, a friend, which is really nice. She asked me and 10 other women, it was before the second Women's March, she asked me um, to make an illustration that spoke to how I was feeling about the Women's March. So I ended up painting this woman kind of like hero in a cape and on her chest, it says um, voting is my superpower. Mm. And she's got her dog with her, her superhero dog. And he's got a little vote button on his, you know, his, his collar. And it was all, it was like, (laughs) and, and Elise Nelson, this, the um, founder and co-founder with Hillary Clinton and CEO of Vital Voices saw it in the Washington Post and sent me an email wanting to buy a print of it for their offices. And when I got the email, you know, I looked up Vital Voices and I was like, well, this is a cool organization. (laughs) Like I didn't know anything about it. And um, it's funny because she tells the story and she says that she sent the email and then like three seconds later I called her and I don't remember that. I remember taking the time to look on the website, but it's a better, it's a better story. Hers is better, but I think I, I'm sure I looked it up because I, I was like, Oh, this is cool. I want to connect with, with, with this organization. And anyway, then she just invited me to be part of, they have a big annual fundraising gala where they honor five women that they've worked with. And, and Vital Voices is an organization that supports women all over the world to, you know, realize their dreams. And uh, these women are doing things that are, you know, really helping humanity and changing the world. And so they will, you know, find mentors for them, find funding, you know, connect them in ways that will help them, you know, propel them to be able to do whatever it is they're trying to do. They worked with Amanda Gorman for five years, I think at least before, wow. before, you know, all of her, her fame this year. So, so Elise kind of pulled me in and I went to the, so they have this big event at the Kennedy center where they honor five women that they've worked with. And, you know, it's a big star studded thing because they have all these heavyweights on their board and Diane von Furstenberg and Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi. And, you know, like it's all these anyway. So I went to this event and I was just, my mind was blown. Like I was just so excited. And they had this little, this, um, this, um, gallery show the night before, which is what she invited me to be part of. And some of my work was in there. And anyway, then after this event, they had as part of the um, the show, they had portraits of the women they were honoring that were on a big screen before the women came out. And I, I just said to Elise, I said, hey, next year, you know, why don't you think about having me do the portraits? And uh, and she liked the idea. So, yes. so the next year yeah. I did five portraits, um, four women who you probably wouldn't have heard of. And Diane von Furstenberg was one of them also. Uh, so I did the five portraits and at that event, again, you know, I was totally blown away. And then right around that time is when Elise had this idea for the book. It was initially just going to be a book. And her first idea was to have 100 different artists. And then she realized that that was Insane. And, <laughs> an insane undertaking for sure. <laughs> but 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 actually the whole thing was an insane undertaking because at the Absolutely. time Had when we started it, she wanted it to come out for International Women's Day, which was 
I think about eight or nine months away. And I was just like, I mean, you know, calculating how many <laughs> I would have what? to paint a week <laughs> in order to give the printer enough time to make a book was just like, oh my God, like, I don't even, can I even do this? And, you know, we just, we just started. And, and that's a really cool thing about Elise is that, you know, she does have kind of crazy, possibly unrealistic ideas, but, you know, sometimes you just have to try crazy things and a lot of times they work and sometimes they don't. And it, it was funny because I brought in the, the book designer before Aseline ended up being the publisher, which was really cool. But in the beginning we didn't have a publisher and I brought in um, a designer friend and between she and I, I don't even know if Elise actually even ever knew this. Like we had a deadline between me and the designer that if we weren't at a certain point by this date, we were going to have to tell Elise it was impossible to oh, make wow. the deadline. You know what I mean? And so we hit that. We hit that, 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 that time of impossibility. Like it's no longer possible. And right uh, soon after is, is when the pandemic started. You know what I and mean? All of a sudden, so, you have so much more time. <laughs> and, and, but, but in between all this, what happened is Elise started talking about this exhibition at the Kennedy Center. She's like, oh, when the book comes out and we have the, you know, our big fundraiser, maybe we can have an exhibition of the work at the Kennedy Center. And I was like, well, that's ridiculous. They're never going to do that. <laughs> and then it actually happened, you know. Wow. And, what, and, and, the, and the crazy thing is, is that so we blew up, we made prints of all the portraits. We sent the work out to be framed. It arrived at the Kennedy Center March 2020, right? Well, 2020 the, was the year that didn't exist. Everything right, okay. is, it's yeah, like yeah. it didn't so, happen so, that year. So March 6, <laughs> 2020, and uh, the show was hung, and and then um, everything was canceled. So the uh, the opening didn't happen. Oh, the, the Big Vital Voices event didn't happen. But I was in D.C. for a week. Um, and, um, the show was actually open for a week, like thousands of people came through. And, and actually, if you go on my Instagram, in my Instagram TV, there's a video of it. And so I was really lucky, you know, like I had an amazing week just to hang out with this exhibition before everything shut down. And wow. it just, it just reopened last week. It's the longest running art exhibit at the Kennedy Center because it literally it was like it went into like like I don't know what do you call it like a time warp pod or yeah. something like yeah. like it was just there was for just this whole stuck, time frozen in time frozen yeah. in time and wow. and they're actually having an event uh towards the end of August and so I'll get to see it again and it's going to come down in early September but, oh man, now uh, I need to was, get to DC so I can see this in yeah, person. Yeah. That is incredible. It took some guts though, too, to say, why don't you let me do the artwork? I mean, you're, you're a brave lady. Um, thanks. Yeah. You know, I guess I am sometimes. It's funny because my daughter and I were just talking about this when I was with her recently and my granddaughter who's almost seven months old I, I feel like a lot of this year has made it's made me more timid like this year like you know mm. like it was really scary and I think that one of the ways and that 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 come that that manifests is yeah. I'm a little more timid about some of the things that I do out in the world right now you know it's like and we were talking about this, like, like not feeling very brave. And she actually said, no, nah, you know what? You, you're brave. Like you are really <laughs> brave. And I don't know, you know, I think that's another thing that the New Yorker has taught me because I've, I've submitted so many times with so much rejection, you know, that, mm. and I know it's the same for everybody. I know they get a million submissions and sure. reject most of them. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I do have a bit of an attitude that it doesn't hurt to ask, it but, doesn't. but it's all, but what's also really important is the tone and the way in which the asking 
is happening. And I've learned a lot about that in the last couple of years. Cause I think I can come across like a bit of a bull in a China shop. Like I can just like go for it and just ask and, you know, and I've, and I've learned the older I get, I guess, I don't know. I just have a little more, uh, <laughs> grace comes to wisdom. A little, yeah. yeah. A little more grace about it. Well, so I'd love to hear that. Like I'm a big fan. Like if you don't ask for it, the answer is no. And there's no real harm. Although I think for mm-hmm. some people, the harm is the rejection. The rejection yeah. feels hurtful, but yeah. in most cases there have to be an awful lot of no's but there only need to be a few yeses, you mm-hmm. know, for it yep. to be really impactful. So yep. are you, could you quantify, could you share this sort of the best way to ask to get a result that, or more likely get a result that you want? Is that something you could verbalize? I think just not being afraid of hearing no or mm. hearing silence because, and, and not feeling embarrassed or ashamed like, oh my God, that was so, st- I can't even believe I asked that. Mm-hmm. Like, like not only did they not say no, I didn't hear anything back, which made me feel like, oh my God, like that was so embarrassing, you know? But it's, it, I think getting over that piece of it yeah. is, is the important part. And I think, I don't know, somehow I've got, I, I'm, pre- I'm pretty, I'm pretty brave about that. but but I'm also I'm also not I don't ask for things that are too well once in a while they'll be kind of crazy but (laughs) like um, doing the vinyl voices paintings it's pretty it's pretty gutsy I love it (laughs) well no well you see that didn't feel at all because when I I mean the portraits were fine but I knew I could do a better job you know what I mean? So yeah. they were, they were fine. They were fine. They were done by a graphic designer. Like they were, they were interesting, you know, they were cool, but I was like, wow, I could actually do a good job. But, but, but the funny thing was is that when it actually happened and I saw my work, my portraits projected on the Kennedy center stage, mm. which is like, Oh my God, that, 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 stage, I just that, I have chills. That, yeah. that screen is so big <laughs> they were they were so big I literally couldn't look like I had to cover my eyes because all I saw were the flaws and what was actually going through my head was oh I was so embarrassed I was like oh my god there people are wondering how do vital voices hire this person like they were not these is- wondering that no no <laughs> they seriously were but that's how, and enthralled. That, yeah but that's how bad it is that's how bad it can be you know yeah. when 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 you get stuck in that in that critical place and and you know seeing seeing work really big is 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 pretty sure. it's pretty scary It's so scary. But what I love is that you can be scared by that and, and you just still keep doing what you do because it's yours and and you, it's a, it's what you love. And that's just what I hope everyone listening, like you can, you can do it imperfectly. You can make mistakes. You can be terrified. Just keep doing it. Yeah, that that's true. I mean, something that I'm I'm about to do a bunch this year is is teach in like different places. Yes, in, you have a Mor- uh, Morocco. Mor- I want to go. <laughs> I've looked yeah. at my schedule like <laughs> five times over the last few months. Like, can I do that? I can't paint, by the way, <laughs> at all. Well, I'm not an artist. Yeah. You know, it's it, but but the thing is, is that my my co teacher um, Jennifer Orkin Lewis, who goes by her her name on Instagram is August Wren. You know, she's done this a lot, you know, so she really, you know, we're a really good team because, you know, she brings her experience to the table and I bring what I bring. And between the two of us, you know, we're just a good team. And this is something that the pandemic has really been a been a silver lining for me is is connecting with with a few other uh, artists in a very um meaningful way you know it's like I have art girlfriend buddies now in ways that I never did before That's so cool. and it's um it's really it's amazing yeah well do you have to be uh or want to be a professional artist to go on your Morocco retreat 
You do not have to be a professional uh, at all. Not at all. You just have to have, well, it's, I, well, I guess there is one or two spots open actually, because it was sold out for, you know, the whole year. And then we changed it twice. And, you know, some people have <laughs> trepidation still about traveling yeah. in September. Mm-hmm. I get it, mm-hmm. you know? And so I would say it's more, you just have to ha- go with an open, you know, have an open mind about, about wanting to learn how to paint and draw in a sketchbook and just have fun. Like it doesn't, yeah. it's like, I mean, that's actually almost more fun to teach people like that than people who actually want yeah. to do it for a living because it's really hard to do this for, you know, <laughs> to do it for a living. But, yeah. you know, if it, it, it's mostly women. And, you know, if some women are lucky enough to be at a stage in their life where they, they can just kind of, you know, follow their creative passions for fun. Yeah. That's really that's cool. That's, that's awesome. It yeah. Is. Yeah. I love that. Well, I believe that you've shared so many wonderful successes with us just in the last you know, less than an hour. And I I can hear in the way you describe them that they feel like big wins to you and successes. And I'd love to know, how do you celebrate a success or a win? Oh, that's funny because I remember when I first saw the art director's name in my inbox from the New Yorker, like I, like I saw the email, I saw her name, I read the email and I started to scream like loud. And Mm -hmm. I ran into my husband's studio screaming. And for my first three New Yorker covers, that's exactly what I did. Every time I I got the news, like I just started (laughs) screaming. And it was really funny because oh, the last maybe that was the first three. And then the last three, like I didn't scream, like I was excited, but I, but I was more under control and I realized, wow, I don't scream about it anymore. Like, that's cool. Like I, <laughs> cause it's normalized. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not, it's definitely not normalized because it still really feels like a miracle every time, but that's good. the whole screaming thing, uh, yeah, how do I celebrate? God. Um, well, the Vital Voices show, uh, you know, everything was thwarted, you know, like all of the mm-hmm. the stuff. And when the book came out, there was no, there was nothing. We did have a book signing in L.A. last month because I had a, I was in an exhibition in L.A. And we combined it with a book signing. But you know what? As you're asking me that question, I don't celebrate my wins mm. that much. I What's mean, possible if you decided to start celebrating those small wins? Yeah, I like that idea. I like that. Actually, I really like that as a, idea as a new goal to to look at what I could celebrate each week. Or like, okay, what did I? What what good things happened this week, and how can I celebrate them? I think it's a great little like new way to think of things because me too. Uh, <laughs> I want to know a lot will of you times to let me know. <laughs> yes, I will. I will. I will definitely. Um, and I will get, I, I will, I have a, I have an art, um, my, my art gals that I meet with every week and it's, um, it's Jennifer who I mentioned already. Uh-huh. And then, uh, Erica Lee Sears, who's an amazing oil painter and Samantha Dion Baker, who is an amazing illustrator who does all kinds of things. And each week we, we talk on Zoom and we, we inspire and share stories and, you know, like give cr- creative prompts and it's amazing. And I think they would love this. I think they would love this idea of, okay, what are we selling? Not, not yes. just asking what's inspiring us this week. It's like, what are we celebrating this week? And it doesn't have to be a big thing. No, not at all. I love that idea. I I'm love it, it too. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what everyone says when you uh, share it with them and, and what yeah. transpires from that. It's one of my favorite things as a coach is to help people learn the value of celebration and and what the gifts are that come from that and how um, they multiply. When we honor them, they multiply. Okay, so so give me an example. Like what's something that you celebrate and 
what happened and how did you celebrate it? Yeah. Okay. Turn the tables on me, Gail. All right. Yep. Well, I'm a big fan of celebration. Uh, I believe that celebration leads to gratitude and I've written two books on gratitude. Um, uh, I have, I'm certified in positive psychology and what I know for sure, n- not just because it's worked for me and my clients, but because there's science behind it is when we stop to celebrate, uh, it, it forces us to pay attention to what's working instead of focusing on what isn't working. It forces us to feel good. It, it stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system and it decreases stress and anxiety and it increases overall joy and well-being, which is amazing. So I celebrate, like I, I have a new book coming out in October and we have a whole section on the power of celebration and gratitude. We celebrate all the things and I sometimes celebrate by shutting down like, okay, I'm going to go away. Sometimes I celebrate by shouting it to the rooftops. I am a big dance party fan. I mm-hmm. often will turn on Pink's Razor Glass and, mm-hmm. and and dance my heart out. When when I, I do that, typically when I finish a really big project or I have a workshop coming up on July 20th, uh, my coaching method is called the, the Brave Method. And I'm teaching mm-hmm. the Brave Method in this hands-on oh, cool. nine-day intensive workshop, which is wow. so exciting. Wow. It's so much fun. I would love to have you there. Um, Mm. And when we do this workshop four times a year, and when we finish it, we collectively, I turn on Raise Your Glass and we have a collective dance party because we've all worked so freaking hard. We've put Mm -hmm. so much heart and soul into helping people leverage their fear into intentional bravery. um, Because when we do that, we make bigger choices and we have bigger payoffs and it's contagious. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm. there you go. Thanks for asking. I don't, I don't turn the that. tables on me very often. <laughs> oh, good. Well, glad you let me do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Great. that was fun. I love it. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, I, I feel like I would like to really just keep chatting with you, but I have to be respectful of the time and of your time. So let me ask you, Gail, what is your favorite charitable organization to support? I would say Vital Voices right now. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. they they're doing such important work, and um, they you know a lot of a lot of these organizations have had a rough year, so they Absolutely. can use all the help they can get. And 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 the buy the if you want if you want to buy the book Vital Voices: One Hundred Women Using Their Power to Empower. Buy it from Vital Voices. Yeah. And uh, it's on Not their website. From <laughs> Not from <laughs> we'll any place else. Yeah. 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 Well, and because it's a donation, so it's a write off. And um, it, it's, uh, it just goes directly to help Vital Voices. So that's the, that's the place Absolutely. to do that. Well, mine is yeah. already on its way, and I oh, cannot good. wait to get Great. it. We'll link Great. to that for sure in the show notes, and okay. they'll be our charity of the week. So we'll give them a little extra love, and y'all go and check it out. And even, Gail, share your, your Instagram with everyone. Okay. Yeah, it's just my name, Gail, G-A-Y-L-E, Kabaker, K-A-B-A-K-E-R. So check out Gail's Instagram, and you can see a lot of these portraits, and they're so spectacular. And also, we all need the Voting is My Superpower t-shirt. And <laughs> I'm a fan. Can you tell? I love it. Uh, Gail, you. will you share your three words with us one last time? Yes. Perseverance, love, and ambition. And so really quickly, before we say goodbye, let's talk about ambition. You, you almost felt shame in picking that word. I did. I did. You're right. Yeah. I did. Tell me why you picked it. Yeah. Okay. I picked love because you got to love what you do. You can't like, I, 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 it's like, that's at the, at the base of everything, it, 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 especially in creating art. Like it, it really has to be like, what do I love to do? I don't want to be hired to make paintings of, in ways that makes me unhappy. I want it to make, be hired or do create my art from what I love and perseverance, you know, like if I didn't have perseverance, I I wouldn't be doing anything. And I, and perseverance and ambition kind of go hand in hand, but the ambition, I mean, two years ago at my birthday with, with six friends, they were, one friend says, so what would you like in your, you know, what's your wish for yourself in the year? And, well, you know, I want to have love. I want to be healthy, but you know what? I want to, 
I want, I want to make a lot of money. Like I yeah. want like to have <laughs> yeah. a lot of, a lot of success and, and, and it's okay. And, and I, so I really, in the last two years, I've really been kind of seeing what that feels like to make that statement, you know, and without apologizing for it. And there's a way you're right that I want to apologize. Like, Oh, uh, you know, because I don't ever, a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, cause I don't ever want to be, have my art like making money overshadow or overtake the, I don't want it. It's not the purity. It's the, just the intention behind what well, to be the intention. It's not why you create. Yeah. 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 It, but on the, but in the same you know, in the same conversation, it's told, it's, 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 there's nothing, there shouldn't be anything shameful about wanting no. to have a lot of success. You are and, worthy of success and all the money, all that yeah. you, you are so worthy. We are all so worthy of it. I'm so glad you picked that word. Well, thanks. Thanks for illuminating <laughs> my discomfort <laughs> with that word. <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of my job. I always tell yeah. people everything you really want is just on the other side of uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, and you you got to lean in to the uncomfortable to get there. I yeah. I love it. I love you. I love your work. I dream Thank of you. having uh, an original Gail Kabaker on my wall. Oh, so, well, we should pro- we could probably work something out. We could probably work something out. Let's okay. do that. <laughs> okay. All right. And I cannot wait to hear how this celebration conversation um, shifts in your life and with your artist friends. So be sure to come back and let me know how that goes. I will. I will do that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being here, Gail. Thanks for having me. Okay. I hope you all enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. It was just so much fun. And I want to hear what you think. So as always, I invite you to give me a call at 312-646-0205. Let me know what you think about this episode, something you want to see in the future, or tell me how you're out choosing bravely. I want to hear it. And don't forget, it's not too late to join us for the Brave Method Workshop. You can get all of the details and register at vickeryandco.com slash workshop. If you are on the precipice of something big and you are ready to stop living small and stop being stuck, come hang out with us. Starts July 20th, but you'll have access throughout this whole week. vickeryandco.com slash workshop. This is Heather Vickery reminding you today and every single day to go out and choose bravely. Hey friends, I want to share something really exciting with you. We already know you enjoy listening to podcasts because you're listening to this one, but I'm also betting you enjoy audiobooks. And hey, listen, if you don't already enjoy audiobooks, then it's time to check them out. That's why I'm really excited to share Libro.fm with you. They are an incredible new platform for listening to audiobooks. And by choosing Libro.fm over other audiobook services, you are supporting a local bookstore of your choice and investing in your local community. Libro.fm offers over 150,000 audiobooks via their primary platform, which, by the way, they built with love and from scratch because they're a small business also. They even offer bookseller recommendations for great audiobook options. You can sign up right now via www.vickeryandco.com slash LibroFM. That's vickeryandco.com slash L-I-B-R-O-F-M. And when you do, you'll get one free audiobook of your choice, and the proceeds will go to your favorite local bookstore. Now, check what I just said there. You're going to get a free book, and the proceeds are still going to go to your local bookstore because Libro.fm makes sure that their booksellers get paid even when they give a promo to customers. I've listened to over 20 audiobooks this year alone. I especially love listening to memoirs read by the author, and it feels great knowing that all of my purchases support my local bookstore, The Book Table, in Oak Park, Illinois. Libro.fm. The same audiobooks, the same price, but a completely different story. Check them out right now at vickeryandco.com slash librofm. Have you ever thought about starting a podcast? 
Maybe you've had this thought and then quickly shut it down because who has the time? Or you don't know how, or gosh, it just all seems too hard. If you have something to share with the world, we wanna encourage you to get your message out. The world needs to hear it. Did you know that 50% of all homes are podcast fans? If you've ever wondered about having your own podcast or how it can increase your business or get your message across, then please join me and the other experts from the Podcast Power Academy for our monthly free Q&A session. It's called, So You Wanna Start a Podcast? This casual live conversation will help you understand how podcasting can be a great decision, why now is the best time to get started, and how to get into action with it. Visit podcastpoweracademy.com to learn more. You've been listening to The Brave Files, stories of people living courageously. To learn more about the show, find our show notes and full episode transcripts, or to get some great bonus content, visit thebravefilespodcast.com. And we would love to know what you think of the show. You can give us a call at 312-646-0205. Let us know your thoughts on the episode, the show in general, or maybe share with us how you're out choosing bravely. This episode is brought to you by Vickery & Co. Success Coaching. Coaching that helps you maintain a life well-lived and a business well-run. Learn more at vickeryandco.com. Our music was created and produced in a custom collaboration with Matt Lewis from ML Creative Consulting, a boutique firm dedicated to helping clients identify their unique sound and amplify their brand with custom delivered soundtracks. We couldn't do any of this without our extraordinary audio engineer, Andrew Olson. Learn more about him and check out his work at findandrewolson.com. And special thanks to everyone on Team Brave from our producers, associate producers, copy editors, writers, and support team. Special thanks to Molly, Mary, Kim, Sabra, and Sabrina. I'm your host and executive producer, Heather Vickery. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next week.